What's up, you guys? And welcome back to Tune In Tuesdays with your favorite gals, the H's. I'm Haley. And I'm Hannah. Let's get synced. you all welcome to episode 33 so happy you're here you already know your gals are here sipping vibing speaking of vibes Haley, what they like girl the vibes are high i'm not gonna lie i probably went to one of the most lit weddings i've ever been to over the weekend i'm talking waka flocka on the the dance floor run it by chris (laughs) brown they might have even played low. I mean, all of the eighth grade social hits were played. It was amazing. The speeches were good. The food was phenomenal. And that's amazing. I don't know about y'all, but food at weddings is what people remember, right? Like, I've been to some weddings where I was like, nah, that ribeye is dry. It's cold. <laughs> no, no, no. And I remember that more than I remember anything else. But um, caught another bouquet. You know, it was light work. I got a video of it. I might share it on the, on the call. <laughs> it, uh... <laughs> Y'all, if you were just now listening, first of all, my voice is left. This is still Hannah. This is the same person. <laughs> Haley does not play when it comes no. to catching the bouquets. I mean, I she'd be doing it, doing it. I know. And I'm trying like, listen, ladies, y'all should just sit down. I got at least six inches on every single one of y'all, especially in these heels. Yeah. I'm about to Over. stomp, stomp. It's over. And I mean, I just made Benito. a look. Up. It was, yeah, before it even started. So I just really walked up. She threw it and I just grabbed it out of the air. <laughs> Everyone behind <laughs> me was like, you can see him in the video like, oh. <laughs> So we're 6-0. and oh. We're going steady and strong. But amazing food, open bar. We love an open bar. Yes. Um, probably some of the best food I've had, like I mentioned. Probably since your wedding, Han. I still remember that. Oh, uh, freaking coming up on two years. I know. Oh my god, two years. I know that chicken. Mm. Well, actually, where we got our food, it's a restaurant. You can actually go order it, like as a meal. Yeah, you it, need to do that. It was go so ahead, good. drop the name because she was. Yeah, so it's actually fine. Langtree Langtree Catering and Cafe. It's um in Lake Norman, I think, off of close to Exit Thirty Six. Oh if god. I'm right, Chef Nate, do it, do it, do it, do it, do it, do it. <laughs> Yeah, y'all just need to, <laughs> if you get anything else on this episode today. So good. All, All right, right, so you caught the bouquet. Caught the bouquet. Um, dropped it low on the dance floor, left the dignity at the venue. It was an amazing Absolutely. time. Absolutely. Um, so the vibes are high. Otherwise, just uh, football Sunday was the next day. So all around great weekend and no no complaints from my, my side. How's your vibe, Han? Yeah, my vibes are super high as well. We had a weekend full of the mothers. It was my mom's birthday. Excuse me, it was my um, my stepmother in law's birthday. Wanda, her birthday was this past Friday, um, and then it was my mom's birthday this past Saturday. And we just celebrated our moms doing things they wanted to do. Grabbed a great brunch with Sam. You know that was on here. The perfect hot dog in the DM of Thunders. <laughs> our girl Sam, our well, our moms are actually very close and grabbed a nice brunch. And, you know, her and I ended up in the liquor store together. Bada bing, bada boom, high noon. <laughs> so, um, and, you know, like Haley said, um, here down in North Carolina, the Panthers got a W. We are so thrilled That's about right. that. Yes, we are. Um, and it's just been beautiful weather. I can't get enough of the weather. I love mm. being outside this time in the morning and kind of later in the e- like afternoon into the early evening. It's crack your window season, y'all. <laughs> it's crack. <laughs> but hide your kids and hide your mom. Just <laughs> <laughs> yeah, lock those screens. You literally, but yes, falls. I mean, is it not everyone's favorite season? Yeah. If all not well, your favorite season, what is your favorite season? Yeah, I, I'm I just big- I have so many reasons I like fall. I love summer, but yes, fall and summer are probably my my top two choices. 
But yeah, before we move on, Pin, update the people about the Nell Bell tummy situation. Okay. It's been, I don't even know. This has been a months long battle, like multiple mm-hmm. months at this point. I think the last update was his sheep dewormer. Mm-hmm. He's now continued the probiotic supplement along with his super strict diet, like super strict diet. Um, And all is well. Everything is going just amazing with his diet right now. You know, knock on wood, I have to just because it's so sad. Like I said in the in past episodes when they're when the pups are sick and it's nice to see them just get back on a good, healthy routine again. And, Mm -hmm. you know, you establish that routine. So you expect it. And then once they trick, like once they get away from it a little bit, it just like breaks your heart because, you know, they don't want to do that. But he's better. Ramble over. He's, he's better. better. Amazing. These dogs are expensive, y'all. Tell you Take what, them. Remy's about to get the old chop chop. Yeah, Ooh. big boy's coming up on that too. Yeah, so um, if y'all have recommendations for where to take your dog to get the old neuter, <laughs> let me know. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> out here in the Durham, <laughs> Raleigh area, I need somebody that's going to give him some real strong painkillers for about 10 days because mama needs to chill. <laughs> 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 you should just take them. <laughs> I'm kidding. I, we do not endorse taking dog pain killers. <laughs> yeah. But we do have right. a, little, a little something today, Han. You going to set it off with a little drink review? Taking it back to Oh, the yes, 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 one yes, yes. With yes. A drink Yo. review? I'm so excited to have a little drink review. If you are tuning into this episode, we got some hot stuff coming later on here in a bit. You know, we like to rambly rambe. You can fast forward a bit if you'd like, but we're going to be hitting on cosmetic culture and beauty standards. Woof. You don't want to miss it. You really do not want to miss it. So y'all already know we always set it off with a clink. But, I, you know, additionally to my water that I always have, I wanted to do a little drink review Mm -hmm. of – Something that I haven't had before. Now you said that they that these were out last season, but I was not brave enough to try these yet. It is a okay. Bud Light Seltzer, and it is like the fall pack. I don't know the name of that the flavor. Pack. Oh, the pack. Yeah, like the you know, like the limited edition, like the yeah. name of it. I think it. You know what? I think it's called the flannel edition. Oh yeah, she does look like she's a little flannel pattern. She flannel is pattern. super cute flannel. Um. Yeah, would love to wear this with a nice pair of light jeans and a little white t-shirt underneath with like a little cream colored something tied around my waist. She's an accessory, love that. y'all. <laughs> In the flannel pack, you get the toasted marshmallow, the pumpkin spice, Ooh. the like the apple crisp, and then what's the fourth one? Mm, is it pomegranate something? It might be. Cranberry? It might be. Cranberry? Yeah. I have to double check that also. I'm like not at the fridge right now, <laughs> but this is the toasted marshmallow. Ooh, Ooh okay. This is uh, the that toasted is the one marshmallow. I would, would want to review on the most is the toasted marshmallow. So okay. thank you for delivering. Me personally, <laughs> before I sip anything, you guys, I'm reading. I'm reading. I got to see if it's worth it. Let me sip mm-hmm. it because I'm not going to waste, you know, something. I'm the type of person if I look at what goes into something, I'm like, okay, I could also get this from three Oreos. Fact. <laughs> Double puffed. So it is working at a 5% 100 calorie okay. starting point. Sodium, 30 milligrams. Carbs, one gram. Keto So, friends. yeah, ingredients, water, cold fermented cane sugar, natural and artificial flavors. Yikes. Citric acid, oh. sodium. <laughs> I don't even know this. Oh, stevia leaf extract and malted okay. rice. Yum, yum. All right. So... Don't drink it if you're pregnant. It says it on the can. (laughs) (laughs) Guys, my nails, I'm trying to pop it. My nails are so long right now. Um, And these are my actual nails. Look at these bad babies. I literally just had them cut down. I wanted to keep them long, but the nail lady was like, babe, we need to cut these. I was like, you know how you get attached to your hair once it grows longer? And you're like, no. Yeah, I get that way with my fingernails. And it really just, oh, man. Give me a moment. Okay. Ooh, what a little candly scent I just oh. got from that. Ooh, it's like warm oh. and just creamy. I like that yeah, smell. What's the, okay. what's the sniff test? Mm. Not smelling as great once I'm up on it. I'm not going to lie. It kind of smells like 
I really don't know. At first, I wanted to say like the Palmer's ah. cocoa butter cream for like the rough and bumpy. Uh huh. Yeah. Okay. Which I'm not now a fan I'm nervous. of. No, it doesn't dry quick enough. It just like stays. Okay. Here we go. <laughs> um. Hmm. Let's say it. <laughs> I don't know. It tastes like a. Mm. Guys, there's so many different tastes. Ooh. Like I can. I can't say whether it's good or bad. It's definitely interesting. The carbonation throws you. You know, like on our episode with Noko, we uh-huh. talked about how like without the carbonation, you can like really taste the flavor. Mm-hmm. Whereas this is like, I don't know if I'm tasting all the bubbles or if I'm like actually tasting the flavor, but the flavor is also being like tricked by the bubbles. I don't really know. Um, it's not bad. I just can only drink maybe half of this. Okay. Maybe. See, Just when not I for me. Of, when I think of like a marshmallow flavored drink, I'm immediately going to like, that's probably going to taste like cream soda. Yeah. I don't know why. I think that. I mean, maybe mixed with a little pinnacle whipped now that you say that. Mm. That would be good with like a little marshmallow on top. Creme brulee that bitch. Psh, burn it with the Do fire. You get, you get the pineapple notes. I mean, or pineapple. <laughs> 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 the marshmallow <laughs> notes in there. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Maybe okay, crumble up okay. some graham crackers. All right. Too far. Too far. But it's too sweet to have a whole one. Like that might be mm. a little. Yeah. Little little too sweet to, to enjoy beyond just, I think, just one can. All right. Good to know. I don't have to pick mm-hmm. up a bag. Give them a try. Yeah. I'm going to try. I'm going to try the pumpkin spice one next time. Okay. Next week. Too and now. then I kind of like, I like to look at them. As a whole, like if I had to rank them, so if you want to try them between now and then, you can do two yeah, next week. Do that. We can do that. We can do that. Oh my God. I can already feel, guys, if I start burping, I literally just kind of like burped under my breath, but I know I'm not going to be able to hide this because I mean, the carbonation, I just don't get it like that. <laughs> I feel you. The flux. The flux. The flux. Flux. <laughs> So, you know, I was doing the typical scrolling on Instagram and I came across, you know, one of Haley's friends that I happen to know and Mm -hmm. on her Instagram story, you know, you know how you just like share stuff. We do it all the time on our Instagram. We just kind of like share stuff that resonates with us Mm -hmm. um, because it puts it out there for everybody to see who's just kind of like doing what everybody else is doing. Click, 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 you know, going through reading it, you know, making meaning of it, you know, whatever. You know, and the thing that she posted, Haley, I shared it with you. Mm -hmm. It just hit so hard on cosmetic culture and just kind of beauty standards. So I was like, wow, that's something that is very prevalent to both of us Mm -hmm. being women in our mid to late, late, late 20s. (laughs) <laughs> we, the latest, the latest we can really <laughs> relate to these things but i kind of just wanted to share the post mm-hmm. okay so the account the original account that shared it was confused dolphin but not like but like <laughs> d-o-p-h-a-n dolphin. that's dolphin right <laughs> yeah so so it has this picture of anne hathaway once again mm-hmm. This source, you know, she she started it with Anne Hathaway is beautiful, but the statement below. Like she obviously felt something from it as well. Yeah. I mean, it has a picture of her at 19 years old and 36 years old. And Haley, will you go ahead and just read what that says in that post? Yeah. So this is um, a tweet from someone else at this meme page, I'm assuming, has... Confused often. <laughs> yeah. Has um, reposted and this person tweeted, she's beautiful, but is it time to talk about how weird it is that our culture encourages women to think they're not allowed to age like normal humans? That having a wrinkle or a gray hair at 35 is somehow outrageous and they have to invest in beauty products to fix themselves. So like on the left, she's 19 and in the picture um, on the right, she's 36 years old. I mean, she looks absolutely stunning in both photos. Virtually Mm -hmm. identical. Honestly, they don't look different at all. I mean, aside from just your like, once again, the beauty standard eras, you know how they come and go, like by the shape Mm -hmm. of her eyebrow, the arch of her eyebrow, or maybe placement of 
blush. <laughs> the funniest part to me is in this picture, the picture of her at 19, she is rocking the middle part. So she is. Don't come for her Gen Z's. <laughs> The 90s girl. <laughs> but what did you think when you first read that? So, I mean, it just could not be more true, honestly. I think we just mm-hmm. see the theme over and over and over again. More often than not, it's about a female. For example, JLo is just like the staple of this kind of trend. Like, look at her when she was 18. Now look at her and she's 52. Oh my gosh. And Mm -hmm. it's like, well, what if she had a gray hair or like a dimple? You know, it is, it's kind of exalting this idea of perfection again. And I think we've talked about this before, but doesn't exist. And really it's just trickling down in a really toxic way. I think more than anything to like, the younger generation Mm -hmm. because they're looking at this like i need to look the same as i did when i was 19 when i'm almost 40 years old which Mm -hmm. is impossible we know that avino ain't ain't doing it (laughs) like jennifer anastan does not use that y'all we talk (laughs) jennifer anastan's skin does not look like that from avino you know and we 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 talked about cosmetic procedures in the past on one of our episodes, um, I mm-hmm. believe in season one. God, it's been so long, episode 33. But the culture surrounding cosmetics nowadays is much more than, hey, throw some blush and lipstick on and feel great about yourself. It's, yeah. you have a wrinkle under your eye. Shoot it up. Get something Use in some there. Fill it. Use some filler. You have smile lines on your face. Too happy. No. Stiffen it up. Like I know. It's like let's just erase that ha- the happy memories off your face. You smile too much. We need to get rid of that. Like what? Right. Just- and it's it's like we want to we want to feel supported as we age because you know, as I've gotten older, your body starts to change and things do start to change. And not that I feel any certain type of way about it, but I can imagine that everybody at some point during their aging process feels something. But the fact that it it is now starting to seem abnormal in a sense that wrinkling and gray hairs are kind of looked down upon. And the expectation is to get rid of them, to treat them, to buy the next best thing, to literally drain your bank account. I've literally spent $98 on like a bottle of DNA enzymes for my face, like something like Mm -hmm. that. And it just like, you know, because my dermatologist said, Oh, you need this. I think it it really just pushes the ideology that like flaws are not acceptable. Mm -hmm. Like anything that is not picture perfect is just ugly more than anything. Like for lack of a better word, like if you have a gray hair or a wrinkle or a dimple on your ass cheek, ugh, you know, like fix it, like cover Mm -hmm. it up. And even if Jennifer Aniston is using that Aveeno and her skin looks that good, good for her. You know what I mean? Like, but that's probably not, that's, not the case for the majority. The, right. The vast majority. Like, right. The, and also, these are celebrities. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. this isn't my mom or my cousin or someone that is living what I would say is a more average life. Like, these people have resources to make them look this way, but I don't necessarily think that it should even then be an expectation. Like, our society just puts such an emphasis on, like, the aesthetic of people now Mm -hmm. it's gross and if you've noticed like everyone's kind of starting to look the same yeah in a in an odd way in an odd way everyone wants like a button nose Mm -hmm. you know know, very very filled lips small ears like like it's almost to the point in certain parts yeah in certain parts of our country it's you stand out If you don't have things done to your face, like the normal signs of aging, like it it stands out because everybody has cosmetic work done in these certain areas, like LA to be. I wish I could say that was an an exaggeration, but like I literally Mm -hmm. personally know women that turn 18 and it's not like I'm going to get my belly button pierced anymore. It's I'm going to get... Botox and filler. Like I know yeah. girls that are literally graduating from high school and that is what they want for their birthday. It is not That's a car crazy. anymore. It's like I want <laughs> something, you know, bre- my breast augmented or something, you know, that's just a cosmetic enhancement. 
And yeah. I, it's probably due to things like this, this unrealistic yeah. expectation that you're not going to age in 20 years. And I'll tell y'all right so. now, like even from the time I was 21 to now, huge difference. I mean, yeah. that it's just, that is normal. That is mm-hmm normal and it's true we are coining the term cosmetic culture by the way so hashtag (laughs) (laughs) but i just i feel bad even like j-lo do you know how heavy that must be to like carry around that expectation all the time yeah to have to to do that that. chris jenner oh lord i just it's got to be so exhausting for them to feel like they always have to look a certain way I know it's exhausting. I mean, you see these celebrities getting chased by paparazzi and they're like Mm -hmm. just completely annoyed with it. But I think it really is just, again, sending a message to like people my age and younger. Aging is a bad thing. Yeah. Which is also like, if I was an older individual, I would be insulted. (laughs) Like, what's wrong with my gray hair? What's wrong with my wrinkles? Like, we're also sending a message that that is just ugly. And I think that's wrong. Also, all around, just very sad. Truly. I know it is sad and it's scary because it's like, damn, if you can't afford this stuff, then you don't live up to the expectations of what the society, the society has established. But I also yeah. think that beauty standards play a role into it. You know how it's like this set of qualifications that a woman is expected to meet to be deemed like feminine, right? Like mm-hmm. in the ideal mm-hmm. beauty sense. Um, Mm -hmm. and I think that's absolutely trash because it also goes along with times they change over Mm -hmm. time. They vary from culture to culture. And for example, I know there are Indian cultures where, um, nostril piercings are a sign of one, a sign of pure, just beauty. I mean, gorgeous. They are just, you know, they are the goats and the trend of that because it's a trend over Mm -hmm. here pretty much. But it also means things in their culture. Whereas over here, it means other things. Like Mm -hmm. personally, my mom was heated when I got my nose pierced. Heated. Just because of what she thought it makes me look like. And like the fact that I would put something in my face. And I'm like, yeah, but what you're not understanding is not that I am – I'm not saying at all that I practice in these cultures, but it's it's widely accepted just because it's an opinion doesn't mean that it's it's wrong in some sort. But the fact that okay. women as a whole are held to this sit of stand, this list. God dang, I cannot talk tonight. I've been talking all day. I'm tired of talking, but I love talking for this. I just can't talk. So bear with it. Bear with it. Um, you know, we're all, it's like we all have this checklist. Mm. And I feel like the aging process falls under a set of now beauty standards that is adapting into our world and our like our well, guiding set of norms. I feel like it's interesting you brought up the time aspect of just beauty standards in general, uh, which reminds me about a conversation I was actually having a few weeks ago. I was out to brunch with a girlfriend of mine, and I was actually – speaking very highly about someone that both Hannah and I know and how good they looked and like how much I just thought they were so beautiful and their body and just all these things. And I was just gloating over them, girl crushing over them. And I was with this, my girlfriend and her boyfriend out, like I said, at brunch. And he was like, Oh, well, like, who are you talking about? Let me see. And this gentleman is a bit, older than Hannah and myself. So I was like, oh yeah, sure. Like showed him the picture. It's this picture on Instagram. And he was like, no, like, I don't know what you're talking about. (laughs) And I'm like, he was like, I would consider that like not basically in shape. Like it was not, the body was just not acceptable for him. And it just made me realize like, I was like, okay, then, like, what is your idea of someone that's attractive? And he was like, oh, well, I just think that, like, more petite figures are attractive. And I think it just goes back to the fact, like, I would say this individual is closer to 40. We're in our, you know, 20s. And I think that back then, you know, about a decade from now, almost two decades from now, 
we were looking at Victoria's Secret models and they're literally 119 pounds. And people were like, oh my God, that is like what is beautiful. Yeah. And now we're like, yes, like hips and women with real curves and, you know, their skins has dimples and flaws and stretch marks and all these things. And mm -hmm. we embrace that. And it's just goes back to that piece that it's like that is always in flux right so it's like today being what you know our generation is kind of going to as thick um basically just having curves and being a healthy legit woman <laughs> in mm -hmm. my opinion that's in right now but tomorrow it could go back to being 105 pounds and this person like said that about someone that I know personally when I was gloating over their body and I was just like so turned off from the conversation after that. But I took a step back and I was like, I guess I can't really be mad at them because that is just like the norm that they grew up in and what is mm -hmm. attractive. And it's just unfair, I think, to women, especially when we're holding them to a standard from, you know, this male might not think they're attractive. This one might blah, 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 blah. And it's just like, why can't they just be who they are? Yeah. And there's always an opinion, I think. Yeah. That's not really the case. I'm not trying to make this a female versus male thing, but it's, it's generally just a beauty standard that women live with and it can switch on a dime. Mm -hmm. Like I said, tomorrow we could wake up and, you know, just very underweight, not very healthy looking female body is going to be basically held on a pedestal again and all of a sudden now if you have curves you're not attractive anymore it's just it can be so right. white and black and it just really goes to show that like the times and the norms and the beauty standards of this moment or this year right. are have to constantly adjust yeah something but i dislike what? so much about bodies is there is such a descriptive word for someone's size and it goes with what you can see thick mm -hmm. thin big small short tall but then there's so many stories that go along with these bodies like i've had girlfriends talk to me about body image before and how they feel about their bodies and one of the first things that i just tell them is think about what your body does for you and can do for you your body is strong your body can rest your body can do all of these things i hate that it's just like oh, I see a body and that body is blank. We create all a whole other humans. I mean, what else do, yeah. really do you need to say? <laughs> yeah. I mean, um, and it goes back to gratitude, just being grateful for what your body is able to do regardless of its size. Yeah. And I mean, it's... Or anything about it. Bumps, lumps, hairs, scars. I mean, yeah, they have these things out here to change you, but... I don't know. I feel like it's, we've talked about this before. Haley and I have both said, hey, if you want it, get it if you got it, right? If you get it like mm -hmm. that and you can afford these things and that's what you want to do for yourself, do it for yourself. But don't right. do it because you're not happy with the standard that society holds you to. Love your body. That's step mm -hmm. one. Mm -hmm. Have to. Yeah. Don't do it because someone else made you feel as though if you had this or yeah. you looked like this, you would be more desirable, acceptable, A, B, C, or D. And it's just crazy. Like, it just goes back to time again. Like I said, you know, like back in the day, pale skin was a sign of beauty. Because you yeah. didn't have to go outside and work. Or um, When's being... that time coming back around? Because <laughs> I'm the palest person I know. <laughs> and... I mean, maybe I just haven't taken the magnifying glass to what it's really like for men as well. I'm not saying that they don't struggle with some standards and things, but um, I would have to say it's a far cry in comparison to the constant pressure that I know our fellow sisters are under on the daily. It's literally, it yeah. got to be exhausting. Just And let's not even talk about the fact that this beauty standard alone actually cosmetic culture mm -hmm. i mean Copyright. there's a direct correlation <laughs> there's a direct correlation <laughs> with anxiety and depression and male and females mm -hmm. it's really sad it just is it's just fuel for low self-esteem and like i said body image and self-talk right um if you're not familiar with self-talk i love a guided self-talk not anymore um because you begin to do it so much that you, you no longer need the guiding for it but 
if you need to build self-talk, self-esteem, anything like that, there's so many resources that you can find by just the quick search on the internet to find what's best for you. But begin talking talking to yourself in the mirror the way that you want to be spoken to. Don't look in the mirror and point out things that you don't like about yourself. Mm-hmm. If that's not something you would want somebody to say to you, don't say it to yourself. Yeah. And I think something else that I've personally tried to work on and I would encourage everyone else to kind of embrace is like, when someone gives you a compliment, like it's because they genuinely mean it. You know, I don't think that they're trying to say that to be nice. Like, and it feels kind of awkward to receive a compliment. Someone complimented me the other day on my hair and someone told me I had nice skin and I was like, oh, like stop. Like, but it just reminds me of one of my favorite commercials. I can't remember exactly the brand. I want to say it was a Dove commercial, but they had a professional artist draw women the way that the women describe them. And then they had other women describe the same woman and the the images that this professional artist did of the way that the woman described herself and the way that the other women described her were two completely different people. And of course the one that the other women were explaining looked just like the the other female and the artist didn't Mm -hmm. see this person, right? Like they were just drawing basically what, was how they describe them. them exactly and it's just crazy like the way we will talk about ourselves versus the way other people talk about us or what they think about us is so much more true so if someone's giving you a compliment take that it feels awkward but you know there are some people out there that are actually kind and want to say something nice about you and see mm-hmm. something in you so uh something i've been trying to work on also because my first instinct is just <laughs> like what like oh no like oh my hair yeah it's my roots are showing i'm really like i need to get that done it's always you know i'm always rebuttaling with how i can improve the thing that they just complimented me on right instead of just taking the compliment like oh your skin looks really nice oh like yeah i mean i'm still trying to get rid of these acne scars like oh just say thank you <laughs> right 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 but it's hard. Oh, yeah it's- i struggle with that also um but it's it, I think it's because I th- in the back of our minds, we're always like, really? Because, you yeah, know, like, we think these things sometimes about ourselves. And when somebody gives you a compliment on something, my husband is just my A1 for that. I have, you know, Haley and I have talked about this on here. We both battled acne pretty bad at different Ooh. points of our life. And, I mean, to this day, I still suffer with scars. Um, I still have occasional breakouts and stuff like that. But my husband is the world's best for just reminding me the importance of my skin and not just that pimple, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that one little area has a pimple on it, but look at the rest of your skin. Like it looks great. It looks healthy. And Mm -hmm. I don't know. I think it's always about just kind of like just continuing to, yeah, and finding the light within it all. Because you're always going to find something. It's it's difficult to to be optimistic when we live in Again, this like cosmetic culture that's just pushing the flaw, no flaws, block it out, Mm -mm, fix that, don't slip up. I know. You know, like this procedure, and you can look like this. Um, And we're not putting down women that just age naturally, beautifully, because. Oh, y'all are out there. Y'all are out there and you're killing the game. But Mm -hmm. um, I think what this person was trying to point out in the tweet is like, what is wrong with a wrinkle? Like, <laughs> why does she what have is to look wrong? What is wrong with a wrinkle? And why are other women made to feel bad about it? Like if yeah. somebody doesn't have a wrinkle. Exactly. Oh, and it, now it's just like a race to see who has the best plastic surgeon. <laughs> Honestly. And dermatologist. Or like, whose lip filler looks the most natural? Like, who would have thought we would be here? <laughs> I know. It's, now, it's don't get crazy. me wrong. I would try this stuff. If I had the coin to toss to do so, <laughs> just to see what all the hype's about. Hey, I ain't knocking it. I'm just saying, don't do it because you are being told that you would be more desirable if you were. Do it for you. Do it because it makes you happy, not because it makes someone else happy. And that's it. Flaws are fine. Wrinkles are fine. Cellulite is fine. A fupa is fine. It's natural. It protects your reproductive organs. So go ahead and let that thing out. Yep. That's it. It's a wrap. Yep. And this is something I think the cosmetic culture and beauty standards is something we're really passionate about because it has such a heavy hold. If you guys have any questions or comments, 
anything further that you'd like to discuss or get into with us, <laughs> jump into our DMs, email us at syncpodcast at gmail.com. We have a anonymous advice box for questions, advice, anything like that. If you click on our link tree located on, sorry, within our Instagram bio, mm-hmm. it's always on and popping in there. We both have access to it, always responding to our listeners, interacting with us. We live for that shit. So. That's right. If you haven't already and you enjoyed the discussion today or in our previous episodes, head over to Apple Podcasts, throw us a little review, some stars, if you will. And y'all already know we'll be back next Tuesday with some content for you. So that's going to wrap it up for us on our TV Tuesday. We out. Peace.